we're seeing uh, the erosion of the quality of life that we've improved on in such a short period of time of this administration. And we have been impacted. Uh, for, for many uh, months, we were able to keep the visualization of this crisis from hitting our streets, but we have reached a breaking point. We're no longer able to do that because of the volume and numbers. Just last week, we had 3,900 people that arrived here. We are averaging anywhere from 2,500 to close to 4,000 a week. And if you do the math, you see that's 8,000 every two weeks, potentially 16,000 a month that we must feed, clothe, house, educate children, and all the services that you would give a normal adult. And we're seeing that play out on our streets of New York. And that is what the breaking point looks like, what we are experiencing right now. Hi, welcome to an adult conversation. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, welcome back. I truly do appreciate your continued support on my channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. So do y'all remember like four-ish years ago when we had a president whose name tends to trigger people into a blind fit of rage for absolutely no reason, much like Voldemort from Harry Potter. And this particular president talked about building a wall and had large portions of said wall built during his administration. And he also mentioned a few times that we need to have a secure vetting process for the people coming over our border so that we can make sure that they're not criminals, terrorists, traffickers, or drug dealers, and that in order to make sure that our own people don't suffer, as well as the people coming over the border don't suffer, we need to make sure we're only taking so many people in at one time so that we don't strain our resources beyond the ability to keep up, and that we prioritize admittance to those who want to contribute to our society in a positive way. And he also warned that if we did what Democrats advocated for, which was to pretty much open up the border because supposedly it's our moral responsibility to take care of everyone in the world who is struggling, that we would see a mass surge in trafficking drugs, disease and crime flood our streets and we wouldn't be able to sustain our cities because we wouldn't have enough to go around. And we were called racist and xenophobic when we pointed out the obvious consequences of decriminalizing the border. Well, all of the things that we said would happen are happening because the left, the Biden administration and everybody across the country who advocated for sanctuary cities and said that the border was racist are handling the border exactly how we said they were, would and we're getting the exact consequences that we said would play out. And by we, right now, I'm primarily referring to voters who bought what the left was selling as our moral obligation and blindly agreed that we needed to take everyone in and that building walls made us terrible human beings. Because at least for now, there are they are the ones having to live with the consequences of the policies that they themselves wanted. But if they don't get a grip and acknowledge the actual cause of the problem, soon it is going to be the entire country that collapses under the weight. This is the Chicago O'Hare Airport, which has been turned into a shelter for illegal immigrants. And they're actually trying to hide that this is happening, because if this if these leaders who absolutely want to turn America into a socialist hellhole show that their policies are destroying their cities, then they might start to lose support. And we can't have that. And this is Mayor Brandon Johnson of Chicago, and he is asked point blank if he will raise taxes to pay for the illegals that are flooding his city. And he spends about two minutes not answering the question. You as far as tax to help pay for the migrant crisis. Here's what I've said repeatedly. This is an international crisis. And we've that heard requires, you say that. Okay, so, so then, 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 then you know the answer then. Well, the no, federal because government, the answer I asked the answer is, are you adding is, a tax? The, the answer is the federal government has to do its job. And what if we don't? Well, look, there are 30,000 Ukrainians in this city right now who sought asylum, who were refugees. What's the difference between that crisis and the crisis that we're experiencing now? So this is not an unprecedented demand. There were services that were attached to individuals who were seeking asylum from the Ukraine, and the federal government acted. And so my question is, and it's the question that everybody is raising, what's the difference between those who are seeking asylum in this country, 30,000 of whom are in the city of Chicago, what's the difference between Ukrainian refugees 
and those who are seeking asylum from Central and South America. Pretty sure the people that are seeing every single public space around them being flooded by illegal immigrants and they are having to put their tax dollars towards supporting them is not asking about Ukrainian refugees. People of Chicago want to know, will you raise a tax, whether it be a property tax or implement something else? Well, it's interesting. No this? one has ever asked me <laughs> if I'm going to raise a tax. In fact, in fact, you I was far as tax to help pay for the migrant crisis. Awkward. I did not raise property taxes and still without raising property taxes, a full investment in, ho in homelessness, a quarter of a billion dollars, $100 million for violence prevention. We're going to open up mental health clinics. We've eliminated subminimum wage. Black and brown women who were tip workers. We're talking about tip workers that's attached to slavery. We abolished that in this in this city. So I'm not going to answer the question and then we're going to just start talking about race and slavery so that people get completely distracted about the fact that you haven't told them how you're going to solve this problem because you don't plan to. And if we switch over to New York, another sanctuary city, there were busloads of illegal immigrants that were taken to a high school in Brooklyn, New York, and they are now being housed there. And as a consequence, now the students that attend that high school are not able to attend classes. And of course, parents are angry about this. Their kids are being put on the back burner to make room for people who don't pay taxes there, who don't have a right to be there, who do not have any kind of status that is going to allow them to contribute to society in any way. And again, told you that this was going to happen that we are the ones that are going to have to sacrifice everything because the people at the top don't have to make any sacrifices. They're not the ones giving up their spaces and buildings. It is all going to come out of our pockets and we are the ones that are going to have to give up everything. They are going to have to give up nothing and we are going to have to sacrifice everything. I'm going to bet that this woman had a no humans are illegal sign in her front yard until about five minutes ago. Then Kaya Rychik, I am so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name, of uh, Libs of TikTok went out to talk to people out front of the school and get uh, some more perspective on this situation. Have you heard anything um, from other other parents? What were some What were some of the sentiments that that they were saying? Well, some of the parents' concerns. What I can tell you, some of the main concerns. Um, and some of the things that were voiced, for example, our kids, they have to go in with their ID. It's a must, which I agree with because I believe every person, they should know exactly who's walking into that building. The time, it's time stamped. They know exactly what time a kid walks in with their IDs. Um, they go through metal detectors daily. Um, we Sounds like it is a lot harder to get into that high school than it is to get into the country. We have people that are coming in that are unvetted. That we have no idea of their background. Uh, they don't show a Vax card when they walk in there. I'm sure they don't. And we don't know what they're carrying around in them. They're going to be all over that building. It's 1,900 of them. And another parent was also saying that they can come in, 
They can stash drugs, they can stash weapons, whether it's a gun or a knife or whatever. That sounds awfully racist. Or a knife or whatever, because I'm sure you're aware there was a stabbing at Floyd Bennett with these migrants. Mm -hmm. And they can stash these things in the school. And God forbid, like when the, the kids go back to school tomorrow, one of these kids find this, whether it's drugs or a weapon. We were we were we were assured that the building is going to be completely sanitized, but we're not there. And that's why it was very disturbing to have one of the teachers come on and say that um, if you if you parents are so concerned, send your kids in with wipes, sanitizing wipes and, and, and Lysol spray. So basically you deal with it. If you're so concerned with all of these things, then you have your kid fix the problem. You have your kid clean the building. That sounds fair. So these students were then switched to virtual learning, and we all know how effective that is. Kids from the 2020 pandemic, the, the two years, depending on where you lived, that things were completely shut down, have lost years of education just based on that time period and the policies that were implemented. But they have been switched to virtual learning. And not only that, it says here, if you want, uh, please log into your teacher's Google Classrooms for your required assignments. The completion of your assignments will dictate your attendance for the day. Not too terrible, but that it says teachers will be available via Zoom if requested prior by email. So they don't even have access to a teacher unless they make a request the day before. The answer is the federal government has to do its job. What if I don't? As a parent, as a community member, and as a taxpayer, I would be livid. I mean, this is going to affect all of us no matter what, but particularly the people in these communities right now, I would be livid, especially if I did not vote for this, I did not support, and I warned people of the potential consequences of what these policies would do. Of course, the people that fell for the lie that borders and walls are racist are mad as well right now. But if I were someone who had warned these guys that we can't afford this, that we don't have the resources, that crime would go up, that this wasn't safe, that we needed to vet people, and they called me a racist and a xenophobe, and this is playing out exactly how I told people that it would, I would be so mad. And even now that this is all happening, the people that advocated for this, there are still so many that still refuse to say secure the border. Hey, maybe start building the wall again, crack down on immigration, deport people who did not respect the process or wait their turn or go through our legal system to get here. Nope. Instead, they are calling on their constituents to do the right thing and open their own homes, their businesses, their churches, and wherever else they can shoehorn these people in here. Most importantly, if you have an extra room or suite in your home, please consider hosting a family. Safe housing and shelter is our most pressing need. Become a sponsor family. You can contact the Brazilian Worker Center for more information on how you can step up if you're willing to have an additional family be part of your family. If you're a local official, a college president, a business owner or a faith leader with an available building or space in your community, please work with us to offer it as a shelter site. These people, the community members are worried about what could possibly happen just by allowing hundreds, thousands of people into their schools. Why on earth are they going to feel safe just letting another family into their home? I don't see any of the people on this stage volunteering to do it. This is the governor of Massachusetts. If you want people to open their homes, you first. But they are not going to do that. They will cover every square inch of space that they can find and exhaust every resource and take everything away from you and away from us and watch all of us starve before they ever talk about the fact that it is the this administration's open borders that are the problem. The governor of Illinois is begging the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, to stop busing migrants to Chicago amid the winter weather. How about you beg the Biden administration to secure the border and to get a handle on things? And it's baffling to me because still so many of the people who claim to be so much more compassionate and humane than those of us who said we needed a secure border and said that it was our job to sacrifice our home and our spaces and our wealth in America, 
they're the ones that are actively rejecting it now. The same people who believed it then when they were told that building walls is bad and that vetting people is racial profiling or whatever it is that the people at the top had to tell them to get them to support these policies that they knew very well were going to destroy the country. They were the ones who still believe it when their Democrat leader says that it's Governor Abbott's fault that they're dealing with this. They still completely without question fall in line to blame the governors who have been shouldering this burden for three years. And they finally said, we're going to make the people who voted with, for this deal with the consequences. They're falling for the same garbage. I mean, do y'all ever think about the bigger picture? Do you even stop to think about the fact that maybe, just maybe, when that bigoted, fear-mongering, conservative neighbor of yours starts talking about laws, morals, and boundaries, and maybe you should consider the fact that we've been advocating for these things because this is how you maintain a functional and safe society that actually benefits everyone just a thought. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Please be sure that you are subscribed. I have a goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers by my birthday, which is in less than two months. The number I came up with the other day was about 125 to 130 people need to hit that subscribe button on a daily basis, which I know is a huge goal, um, but I know, I know we can do it. And if you enjoy the commentary that I offer on the issues of today that pretty much have created the dumpster fire known as the society that we are living in right now, please check out some of my other videos. Keep it real, guys, and I will see you in the next one.